Latest on Cyclone Bipar Joy and Tropical Storm Guchol on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for June 7th. So we've bursted into activity now across the Eastern Hemisphere with two new tropical cyclones. Of course, one of them we had marked down yesterday, Bipar Joy, which has been named now and has really gotten off to a roaring start, now already a Category 1 on the Zaffir Simpson scale, and Guchol going much more slowly in the Western Pacific. Day 7 of Atlantic hurricane season and we're still not looking at any real suspect areas although the National Hurricane Center maintains a 10% chance near the Azores for that very large system there that's already affecting that whole region and bringing lots of precipitation into the Iberian Peninsula. Day 24 of hurricane season in the eastern Pacific and it's still looking very quiet indeed. You can see a very uniform set of clouds there along the intertropical convergence zone and really not anything very impressive at all there. In the western Pacific, Guchol there, quite easy to spot. Um, it's a fairly large system and will probably grow in size quite a bit more as it slowly moves northwestwards. Bipar Joy, a much smaller system and much more uh, vulnerable to fluctuations in its intensity. Category 1 already, uh, as mentioned at this point yesterday, it only just become a tropical storm and who knows, it may end up doing more rapid intensification, but at the moment it's pretty much level in intensity in the last six hours or so, uh, but certainly more could be on the way. Latest satellite imagery, first of all the rain rate and you can see both of those cyclonic signatures there in their respective areas and in the Bay of Bengal some thunderstorms blowing up along the coast of Myanmar as well but elsewhere looking fairly quiet across the tropics, one or two little flashes across Africa right now. And here is the wide shot of Bipar Joy right now. Uh, it's sort of into two distinct areas. The main core of it, a very tight core on the right and on the left of it, is uh, a big area of uh, banding that's sort of uh, detached from the central core there by a little dry air moat. Uh, that sometimes occurs in storms that rapidly intensify. But there it is right now, an eye not fully apparent, but it has, we've seen little bits of it here and there on that satellite imagery, um, especially on one of those frames, and I think we'll see more of that in the visible hours coming up today. So, Bipar Joy looking decent. In the Western Pacific, this is, of course, Guchol um, looking, uh, and this looks a lot slower considering that the satellite imagery is much more uh, frequent than the other area. But you can see their gradual movement northwestwards is rotating decently, a bit bare on the western side, but on the uh, eastern and southern side, there are lots of uh, convection blowing up there. Uh, the core quite clearly visible as well, but not too much going on in there just yet. Sea surface temperatures in the eastern Pacific are still climbing above 30 degrees Celsius off the coast of Mexico, but still noticeably cool in the open ocean regions. In the Atlantic, also really getting up to speed, up to around 28 to 30 degrees Celsius in some parts of the Gulf, over the Bahamas, and quite commonplace in the Caribbean. So the Atlantic definitely warming up in all of the spots that matter. A little bit of a cool pool there though, near the Florida Panhandle. In the Western Pacific, also a cool area near the southern Ryukyu Islands where Mawa was last week, but it is picking back up again, 26 degrees starting to seal itself over. Uh, but where the storm is right now, Guchol, temperatures are much better, around 30 degrees Celsius tops, but it will gradually move northwestwards and should take advantage of a warmer area to its north. North Indian Ocean, the Arabian Sea, extremely warm sea surface temperatures, 32 degrees, maybe even a shade above that as Bipar Joy continues northwestwards. The Southwest Indian Ocean is shut down pretty much now for the winter season down there. Same too for the Australian region, which is really struggling with those sea surface temperatures now. And also for the South Pacific, where those warm waters only just managed to reach New Caledonia. 
sea surface temperature anomalies show you how distant we are to average. In the western Pacific, still a large cool trail after Mawa, the Atlantic a similar one after Arlene. Uh, but generally, in all of the other areas, it is quite warm, western Pacific around average. Look at the Arabian Sea, though, well above average, which will probably do this storm bit by joys as a decent favour there, 2 to 3 degrees above the normal. Oceanic heat content looks like this right now. The Atlantic Caribbean region particularly building quite a bit more in the last few days. A big spot now south of Haiti, so really on its way there. Eastern Pacific is starting to consolidate a little bit more now in those uh, light blue to green areas. Western Pacific still doing just fine with a few areas needing to build back in after Typhoon Mawa. So let's check what the GFS has in store for us in the next five days. It develops Guchol of course, becoming a typhoon round about the beginning of tomorrow and then it continues northwards and then turns slowly northeastwards and then accelerates as many storms do when they get picked up by the trough to the north and uh, accelerate northeastwards. There it is again, not affecting any land areas in the immediate future, but towards day 5 to 7 it will probably affect the Agasawara Islands, possibly with typhoon force winds. Here is Cyclone Bipar join the Arabian Sea and this is becoming is still quite difficult to forecast. GFS yesterday had it making landfall on day 7, now nothing of the sort. Uh, it's nowhere near landfall by the time we get to day 5 here on this run. Uh, and it's flip-flopping about in intensity quite a lot as well, so I really couldn't give a very good intensity forecast to be honest, because it could be anywhere from a Category 1 to a Category 4 three days away from now. Looking at rainfall estimates, we're back to the Western Pacific to take a look at the expected rainfall amounts from Guchol. Uh, in our update much earlier on yesterday, uh, we were very concerned about rainfall. GFS has toned that down a bit on this latest forecast. The storm still uh, interacts with a frontal or truth region that's moving through southern Japan, but not as much as previously, which means that we're now only expecting rainfall of up to 200 millimeters rather than 300 millimeters as quoted earlier on. Still, that forecast could change again, and those areas could still be in the firing line. 42 inches near the center of the storm as it stalls around that area, moving northwards well to the east of Luzon. Of course, that though is well out at sea and no one will be getting drenched with all of that. Into the longer range, day 5 to 10, the continuation of Guchol, continuing northeastwards there quite quickly and then eventually dissolves into an extra-tropical low. And look out for three other systems possibly on this medium range. A short-lived one there that moved through behind Guchol. You can see it once again actually beginning it near Hong Kong and moving through Taiwan. A little system moving up towards the northeast there. And then a second one behind it around Taiwan there around the 15th of June. And then that third system forming near the Philippines around the 16th, 17th of June. But those are all long range and I wouldn't expect any of those to form yet. And this is the Arabian Sea system, Bipar Joy, starting to stall a little bit there near the coast of Oman. Massive wind field and then moves northwards now on the GFS model run. And looks like it's about to make landfall in Iran, an extremely rare landfall there. Uh, round about, I think that's Iran, probably not far from the border with Pakistan. Um, and that is around the 17th of June there, still as a Category 1 cyclone. Woo, goodness me, that would be something else compared to what we normally see. Scan the barcode and take a look at the Force 13 merch store with all of our usual items, as well as our still waiting for Hone t-shirt and uh, full season and individual animations on request. Well, into the Silly Range, we're actually looking at the Atlantic and Eastern Pacific area because GFS throws another curveball out with an Atlantic Tropical Cyclone and not a weak one either. A hurricane, no less, there on the 20th of June, moving westwards through the Gulf of Mexico and could make landfall in the northern part of uh, Mexico, the country of Mexico, towards the end of that run. In the same frame there, a short-lived system in the Eastern Pacific. GFS was saying something similar to this yesterday. This is still extremely long range. I wouldn't put anything on either of these things happening yet. 
Western Pacific, any further developments? Well, we see that Philippine system just off the coast uh, just gets extremely uh, broad and loads of other things going on there. There's a few more low pressure systems intermingle with it and it really is a big mess in the end as we get towards those later days there. So maybe a short-lived tropical cyclone before it opens back up again, moving northward, extremely broadens out there and gets interacted with another little uh, frontal system there by the looks of things off the Philippines. A big mess there. And what happens to Bipar Joy then? It does move inland, uh, still maintains some intensity for quite a bit as it moves well inland over there, extremely dry part of the world. I'm not sure whether that will happen, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, that's just one scenario though. Yesterday's scenario put it right over Oman and then moving over the Arabian Peninsula, over the desert there. So either could still happen, it could even still stall off the coast and die before it actually strikes land properly. So that would be the uh, optimistic scenario. You can talk about all of that, and there was quite a lot to discuss there on our Discord server, discord.gg slash force13 for tropical weather chat and general discussion available on there as well. We're waiting to hear from you. On this day, one of my favourite storms actually, uh, Hurricane Ava in 1973, an extremely powerful Category 5, and not just uh, an, a a category 5 but an extremely strong one and a really beautiful one when you look at that image one of quite a few that are available and the earliest ever category 5 to form in the eastern pacific and i think by extension the atlantic by some distance as well a category 5 uh, hurricane not typhoon hurricane ava on june 7th 1973 50 years that's a long time now well then, back to this year, and we've got 22 storms to its name now. And the next name in the Atlantic is Brett, the Eastern Pacific, Adrian, and the Central Pacific. It's not even funny anymore. We are still waiting for Hone. Code blue at the moment for both of these two storms. The next name now in the Western Pacific is Talim, and in the North Indian Ocean, it's Tej. Kushol and Bipajoy being the most recent storms, Bipajoy already getting to Category 1 status. In the Southern Hemisphere, we've just got the rest of the month to see if we can get Gizani in the Southwest Indian Ocean before the naming list rolls over. The Australian region, Jasper's next, and in the South Pacific, it's Lola. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.